So, these nuggets are um, made from chicken, but they're made to um, 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 emulate the taste of like, like non chicken nuggets. So, these nuggets are made from chicken, but they're made to emulate the taste of non chicken nuggets. Dope. Let's boost that sound quality. Emulate the taste of non chicken nuggets. Emulate the taste of non chicken nuggets. Dope. Non chicken nuggets. Non chicken nuggets. But they're made to emulate the taste of vegan nuggets. Sounds tasty. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, Kevin. How's it going? Oh, can't hear you. I think you're maybe muted or something. Um, Let's try a couple things. Oh, here you are. Now I got you. All right. Cool. Hello, everyone. And hello, Kevin. Um, welcome to How to Make Narrative Podcasts with Descript. I'm Christiane. I'm the community manager, and I'm joined by Kevin, our product education manager. How are you doing today, Kevin? I'm so great. Happy to be here. How are you? I'm doing awesome. I'm stoked to be talking about this. This is one of our, well, I'll speak for myself, one of my favorite sessions we cover. Mm. Um, I love I love narrative podcasts, and thank you all for being here. Let us know in the chat where you're tuning in from, and also what you're making with Descript. Tell us about your podcast. Um, Kevin, do you have a favorite narrative podcast you've been listening to lately? Oh my gosh. Lately, uh, no, <laughs> but my favorite, I think, narrative style show uh, was California Love by the LAist. Cool. It's a really, okay. really amazing show about uh, a kid who grew up in LA and all the like very specific Los Angeles things that are uh, happening in the city and have happened. It's just really, the sound design's amazing. The writing's amazing. Highly recommend it. It's cool. Great. Love it. Nice. Um, I just listened to a narrative podcast about California too, specifically Malibu. It was really good. Called like Lost Hills or something. Highly recommend. It's like a true crime thing, which is normally not my jam, but I really liked it. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so great to see so many folks here from all over the world um, with amazing podcasts. Um, definitely check out each other's shows. That would be, that would be fun. Um, but today we are going to learn how to do your thing with the script and I'm going to share some slides so you know what to expect here. Um, and let me take this caption down so y'all can see. Cool. So, um, what we'll cover today. First up is collaboration, how to use Descript with your team. Um, organizing your drive for long form content specifically. We'll get you all set up in the Descript drive. We'll show you how to record, import, and transcribe media in Descript. We'll cover pulling selects and ed editing interviews. We'll talk about using Overdub, which is our AI voice feature. How to share revisions, fine tuning in Descript, or non-destructively exporting to stuff like Pro Tools or Adobe Edition. And then bonus, we'll cover social videos. So a really fun way to share your stuff on social media. Or anywhere else on the interwebs. Um, cool. Okay, so if you're watching in Crowdcast, we've got the ask a question section over on the right sidebar um, where you can ask questions that come up. We have our wonderful friend Marcelo from our support team in that section and um, Marcelo will answer answer your questions and then use the chat for reactions, chatting, commentary, etc. Um, I'll be watching the chat and often if you ask a technical question in there, I move it over to the ask a question section. So check back in there. If we freeze, refresh your browser, that normally does the trick. Um, but we're also streaming to YouTube right now. Hello to our friends at YouTube. So if you have a bunch of problems, um, you can jump over to YouTube and watch there too. 
This session is recorded, as is all of our live events. We have a live events playlist where you can check out all of our recordings, um, but we'll also send it up in a follow-up email after this event. Um, and if you want more help, check out help.descript.com. And also, of course, join our Discord for community support. We have 15,000 folks in there, which is amazing. I'm going to throw up a QR code. You can scan that to join our, um, our community Discord. And then last but not least, if you are a new or free user today, use code PODCAST30 at checkout and you will get a month of free Descript Pro. We're going to be showing you some pro features today and we want you to be able to try all of that good stuff. So use that code. Don't worry if you're scrambling. I'll pull up a QR code at the end for you to scan too and we'll send this information in a follow-up email. So no worries if you don't get to it right now. Or if you don't know where your credit card is or something, you know, no problem. Um, okay, cool. Kevin, did I miss anything? I don't think so. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear oh, you. Oh, my gosh. Okay, great. Having a little mic issue. So I jumped out and came back and we're good. You sound great. You sound perfect. Amazing. I'm so happy to hear that. Uh, I don't <laughs> think we missed much besides just plugging our 101 session. So today we're talking about narrative podcasting specifically. So interviews and recording uh, interspersed with narration, writing, typically read by a host or hosts. If you're looking for video editing or overdub or social media clips, anything like that, we have specific trainings and sessions on those. And if you're looking for just like everything Descript can do, please join us for a one-on-one -on -one session and we'll go through the whole app, all of its features. Um, and if this is your first time, maybe pause this and check out a one-on-one -on -one session. And those are on our YouTube page or we have upcoming ones as well. Um, really helpful to kind of get the lay of the land before jumping into making your thing. Absolutely. Yes. The, the baselines really help and help you get all the more out of sessions like this. So we have a bunch of those on YouTube right now. So you could leave this and go watch that and then come back later. If, if you're like, wait, let me, uh, let me get a primer in. So, um, cool. Also something that I just wanted to plug were, we got some feedback in the past that people wanted some captions on our live events. And today we're trying a new version of our software where you should be able to enable live captions. So just want to plug that. Um, we are trying a new thing here. So apologies if there's any little bugs or anything, it sounds like everything's, everything's working out, but, um, yeah, just wanted to plug that for anybody that might want some live captions. Okay, but without further ado, Kevin, I think we can jump into the lesson. Let's do it. Cool. All right, let's pull up Descript. All right, looking pretty good. So today we are talking about narrative podcasting, like you mentioned earlier. There's a lot of setup and considerations to make as we go in. Uh, we're going to pretend for this that Christiana and I are on the same team working on a show and we have a shared drive that we might be working on. Of course, you could be working on a podcast by yourself, but teamwork makes dream work and it makes something like this a lot easier. Uh, and what I'm coming into, if I'm the maybe producer or person who is going into some of our interviews, Christiana has set up some projects for us. And this is going to be the first thing that we talk about is just how we set up our drive to make narrative podcasting easier and better in Descript. So you're going to ask, ask yourself these questions. One is, what does your episode look like in its final form? Are you going to have interviews that span across multiple episodes that pieces of them show up in different episodes, kind of like a serialized show? Or are you going to have interviews that just show up in a single episode and that's it. They're in that episode and no others. If that's the case, what you can do is just create one project in Descript per episode. You'll bring in your interview tape. You'll bring in, you know, some recordings of your host tracking, or maybe you're going to record directly into Descript, but it's typically just one project per episode and it's easy just like that. If you're doing the first option where you have several interviews or maybe huge archivals of tape or whatever it might be, 
that might show up in different episodes. What we like to do first is do what Christiana did here and is set up our libraries of interviews. So we have these four separate projects that are going to serve as kind of archive libraries where we'll just drop in our interviews, transcribe, import them, and they'll just kind of live there as is for a while. When we're ready to assemble our episodes from all of our interview tape, that's when we create another project, one single project per episode, and we can copy and paste text, which is our audio and Descript. We'll copy and paste text from those library archival projects into our episode projects like that. This is a way that we kind of keep our projects a little bit lighter, more nimble. We don't run out of uh, space, essentially, in a project. If you get too much media in a single Descript project, it can start to work a little bit slow. So we like to keep them a little bit lighter, more nimble. There's not a specific number of gigabytes or something that we have, but it's generally these two ways are how we like to, like to organize our projects. And as we know, organization is just such a huge thing. If you're looking for a specific interview and you have a project that is interviews A through F, you'll know that you, when you go in there, you can find that really easily. Simple. Okay, so that's our organization. And I made it here in our drive workspace for our shared drive, just so that Christian and I have uh, access to it together. So we're kind of a team. Once you have your projects kind of organized in a higher level like this, maybe you've made some folders also, depending if it's like new seasons or not, we're ready to bring in some media. So we're going to go through our importing and transcribing process a couple times, I'll show you what that looks like. And then we're going to do some recording as well, some writing, all of those things, pulling selects, pieces of the interviews that we really like, all the things that kind of go into narrative style uh, podcasting here. Here we go. Let's open up our first project. This is what a blank, a blank project looks like. We have this sidebar. We can have all of our compositions here. All the files that we bring in will show up in our files folder here in our media library. But what we like to do is dock these to the side, especially if you're someone coming from the old classic version of Descript to the new Descript. This is a huge time saver and accessibility feature where you can just have your compositions or your files always docked to the side, however you'd like. All right, let's bring some stuff in here. We're gonna bring in uh, an interview. I'm gonna create a composition by pre pressing, excuse me, pressing the plus button. And this is gonna be an Alana and Sasha, or just Alana, sure for you. Start with an A, so it's going to go in through F. <laughs> and in this case, I'm bringing in two files. One is our interviewer, and the other one is our interviewee. We recorded this on Squadcast, so we have two separate audio files. This is an audio podcast. So we have two separate audio files, one for each participant, and I drag and drop them in together so I can maintain a multi-track interview, meaning this is an interview between Alana and Sasha. If Alana's dog barks or something while Sasha's proposing the first question or whatever it might be, we can easily remove that without losing any of Sasha's audio. If we record on any other platform that only uses a single track for both speakers, we're a bit more limited and it's a little bit more challenging. So we really, we really like that. So we have separate audio and or video for each participant. Kevin, could you explain what Squadcast is or what? remote sort of give a little quick primer on remote recording just for folks that are are newer to the terms and maybe are just using zoom absolutely absolutely so uh a tool like like squadcast is a remote recording tool it's basically a really great zoom <laughs> if you use zoom you might notice that your audio is kind of process sounding your video might be a little bit pixelated when you record what Squadcast and other tools, Zencaster, Riverside, there's a bunch of other ones, um, but I use Squadcast a lot, is it creates a studio, a virtual studio, where you can invite different participants and you can record separate, really high quality audio and visual, video tracks. So you join the studio, you have an individual audio and video track for each participant, and then you can bring those into Descript and be able to 
edit and produce your show. They're awesome. You can join from your phone. You can join from your computer. Uh, it's pretty, pretty sweet and helpful for any kind of production. Totally. Cool. Yeah. All right. And the other, the, reason, the other reason we use it too is just we have, you know, I'm working on a, a an audio podcast here, but if I ever want to do social content of any kind and I've recorded really high quality video for each participant, then I have yep. so much more media to mess around with and cut up and put on Instagram or TikTok or something rather than just making audiogram after audiogram after audiogram that doesn't have totally. the visual components. Right, right. And even if you have an audio only podcast, a lot of the pros are recommending that you still use a remote recording tool that includes video so that even if your long form podcast is like just on Spotify or Apple or wherever, you can still use video in the social videos you put out and for the promotion and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, just a little pro tip there. And we make that very easy in Descript. Yes. Yes. Cool. Okay. Ironically, I'm going to use audio files for this <laughs> for this import. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll do some video imports as well. Depends on what you're using. Okay, cool. so I'm bringing these two files in from this one interview from Squadcast at the same time. I'm just dragging and dropping them in to this empty area here. It brings both of these files in at the same time. It starts to transcribe them and import them. And I've labeled my files really nicely. So I have pretty clear speaker names and I'm just going to add their names for each one. I'll do this for every interview that I conduct into an empty project composition here and I'll import and transcribe them and it's going to add them to, you can see here, a multi-track sequence. A multi-track sequence, it takes, Descript takes these two files and puts them in the background, keeps them synced together so that when we're here and we're editing, we only need to look at one script one transcription and one timeline of the entire conversation. And that looks like this. So as we make edits, it's going to make edits to the whole conversation, whether we remove some text in the script or remove some sections in the timeline. It's really just nice kind of linear parallel way of editing rather than looking at several different tracks all the time. Um, but you can always double click in the timeline or right click and choose edit sequence. But if you double click in the timeline, it brings you right to the section under the hood in the background in that sequence. So these are the two surfaces you might be editing. In the sequence, you might edit one track or definitely one track at a time if you need to remove background noise or crosstalk. We'll get into that as we get there. But if you're just making edits to your overall interview conversation, that's gonna happen here in the script and timeline, which we call the composition. All right. Cool. Let's do a little bit of editing for those that are newer and want to see Descript in action here. I'm so happy to do our dream podcast. I know this is really, it's, a, it's been a long time coming. I feel like we've been, we were made to do this. Cool. So we have some opening line stuff to the interview. We may or may not keep it, but we're going to make some content decisions and we're going to do that just by editing the text. I know this is really, it's, a, it's been a long time coming. You can remove what you don't want by outright deleting it in the script by pressing delete or backspace. I know it's been a long time coming. I feel like we've been, we were made to do this. Or you can use our ignore feature, which I really love because it strikes through the text and the script here. Mm -hmm. And you can see the edits that you or another teammate has made. So when Christiana comes in and is going to give some feedback on my first round edit, she can see, oh, Kevin has removed this little stutter. That makes sense. It's not just a random like removal of a huge paragraph or something. Right. You go through. Like we were made to do this. And you can see those edits. This is especially useful for us when we're using removal of filler words. Mm -hmm. So we'll ignore all of our filler words. We got there by clicking this magic menu up here. And I am going to ignore all of our filler words. Apply to all. And then if I want to bring some back as I'm scrolling through. I was like your higher live-in like, videographer. But I was I, also thinking. I like that edit. 
I have the face filter on Zoom right now. Beauty filter on Zoom. I don't look like I can click a filler word and just bring it back in super easily and I'll pull it back into the conversation. So using that ignore feature is pretty helpful. Super cool. Kevin, what would you say your style is when it comes to filler words? How many do you like to keep? What would you say your percentage is? Ooh, good of question. Ignoring of them. I want to know yours too, but I think I, I leave a lot of them out depending on the conversation. Uh, yeah. But I probably bring back like 15, 20% of them just to have it be a little bit more natural and human. Totally. Sounding. Yes. Yeah. I think especially with like interview podcasts, when I'm like having a conversation, I keep a solid amount of them in just so it's natural. Mm. But for more like point blank storytelling, I think I I tend to be pretty ruthless with my uh, filler word destroying ness, destroyment. I don't know what the, what the filler word terminator. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, <laughs> cool. Cool. So that's that's our our first kind of go ahead with bringing in an interview, doing some light editing, content based decisions as we're going through. I'll often do this a lot in narrative shows, just so I have uh, an interview that sounds really good from start to end. To end. That way, when I'm pulling selects and copying and pasting this stuff into my episodic projects, so like my episode one project, I have good quality, concise audio that I don't have to go and then clean up a second time. I know some teams that they're bringing in so many interviews that that's just not worthwhile for them. But for me, I'm usually working off of 10 to maybe 20 interviews for the entire eight to 10 uh, episode season. And it's really helpful for me to have like a nice clean start, nice clean end, filler words removed, restarts, or like if, you know, a guest is restarting what they're going to say, um, or they fumble the words, taking that kind of stuff out. It's really helpful. Awesome. Sweet. Let's bring something else in. Cool. I'm going to bring this guy back. Our compositions list. Uh, I'm going to create another composition here that will bring in maybe a video file. Yeah. We're going to bring this three-part interview, or excuse me, three-person interview. So it's three folks, again, on Squadcast, and I have an MP4 with attached audio for each participant. And I'm going to drag and drop these in. And... Again, this is just an audio podcast, but these are video files that I can then decide to use later. I'm going to drag and drop them in together at the same time. It's going to sync them, add them here, and I'm just going to, yep, add my speaker labels for each file. Find those into a multi-track sequence. Yeah, someone had asked Kevin, does Descript automatically sync audio or automatically sync video? Does not. That is one of the top three selling points for a tool like Squadcast is you have this virtual studio and you press record, every single file starts and stops at the same time. So you never have to sync files or do any of that. Right. So it's a lot easier if if that's a part of your workflow. That's right. Cool. That's right. So in my prod, uh, excuse me, my app settings, click the Descript D and go into app settings. I have my default project type to audio because I mainly work in audio, but I can always switch back and forth to video. For instance, I just brought in these, these video files, these MP4s, and we have this nice little notification where I can switch to a video composition if I need and edit the video. I can always go back to file and set composition to audio only to be able to switch those back and forth. So the video files will always live under the hood, but for now, we're going to keep it in audio only. I'll go through the same process. Remove filler words, ignore them. Boom, got that going. And we have a good 
going to delete the end. This is probably a good time to start talking about our timeline. So we have some pretty cool changes coming up with how the timeline interacts with the script and specifically how words that aren't transcribed, so background noise, music, breaths, all that kind of stuff, shows up in our script. So stay tuned for that. But for now, and probably for a while, if you're working on a podcast, you're going to do a lot of content decisions in the script and then clean up and do more precision editing down here in the timeline. So let's go into this section where we have a bunch of edits and we might need to do some cleanup. I'm a yeah. number two for Reese's peanut butter cups. Definitely peanut butter cups. Yeah. yeah, it's crazy how many things. Great example of where I have a couple different edit points because there are two back-to-back -back filler words removed, and I could bring some back. But if I want to start with this, I might just use these word tabs to just slide over and change the start point of this sentence that Ryan said. And I can always hover over an edit point as well to kind of peel back the curtain of audio, what was said. And either way, Descript is completely non-destructive, so you never lose audio when you're editing. And I can just kind of, between those two, finesse my edit points so it's exactly what I want to say. And additionally, if I want to add a little bit of space, I can pull these word tabs to the right and it'll give me what we call a gap clip. And if you have this set up in your defaults, which is room tone on gap clips, which you definitely should, what Descript does is creates AI generated room tone for each participant. That means it analyzes their mic signals, so like their background noise, the sound of their microphone, the air going on in their space and replicates that audio and puts it in this little space to make it sound like they just stopped talking. Definitely peanut butter cups. Yeah. It's crazy how many things have gotten branded. So if you're wearing headphones or you're watching this recording, you don't have headphones on, put some headphones on, listen to that again, uh, and try it out for yourself. It's, it's a pretty amazing feature that I use all the time. And so do all the podcasters that use Descript. Cool. What else in the timeline? A couple of quick timeline things besides dragging around the, the word tabs here. There's also a bunch of great timeline tools that you can use in conjunction with script editing. A really great one is the range tool, which allows you to select a range of audio and just delete it. I'm a new range tool convert. Are you? I used to, yeah. I don't know why I was sort of making it harder for myself, like blade, blade. Like I was just slicing things up left and right. Mm. And now I'm I'm pretty committed to the range tool and using the, the keyboard shortcuts. So I highly right. recommend those folks. Let me show you the, uh, even. E let me build on that. For you and for anyone else, if, if you're not doing this for crosstalk or removing background noise from one track and not the other, if I look closely here, I have multiple speaker label colors happening at the same time, which means I have two or more people talking at the same time. And I don't really love that for uh, my audio here. So what I can do is double click on that section. It's going to pull me up into the sequence, the original pairing of these th three tracks. And now we can see what's actually happening. I can't need to be honest. But so I'm yeah, popping like a fun. <laughs> okay. So. Ashley's talking right there. Ryan or Rambi's going, and Ryan also pipes in with some stuff. I don't want to hear Ashley or Ryan in this section. I just want to hear Rambi's kind of monologue in this piece. So I can use the range tool or press R, like Christiana mentioned, and just delete this crosstalk from when Ashley and Ryan are speaking. And now when I go back, I can press done and go back into my composition or press escape. That crosstalk is no longer there. My all time favorite candy, to be honest. But so yeah, popping like a fun size is just easy. That's great. There's our big, our big crosstalk uh, move. It's just using that range tool to slice it out, delete it or move it. You can also do, but yeah. Awesome. Um, Kevin, you were just talking about gap clips. Can I throw in a question here? 
Um, someone asked, what happens to video when you add gap clips? I've seen it flash all black. It does flash black. Let me convert this. I'm going to just spend a moment on this since this is a less of a video heavy uh, session, but right. if you have a gap clip, definitely peanut butter gaps. Yeah. It's crazy how many things you have a black clip there. So that's when you make a creative decision, whether you're going to go into the sequence and do some work to extend a section or maybe create a, uh, an overlay where you show one person's video and not the other person's. There's a lot of different options right Super there. Cool. Um, but yeah, do note that if you just make a quick gap clip in a video project, video composition, it's going to introduce a black frame. Cool. And we do have a dedicated session on video podcasting where we go into that in depth. So check out our live events. That is true. Um, cool, cool, cool. Um, one thing, it seems like a lot of folks wanted, could you really quickly cover room tone again, how you would insert room tone? Yeah. Okay. My favorite way is just clicking and dragging these word tabs in the timeline to the right. So move it to the right, room tone. I'll give you a gap clip with room tone. You can also right click and uh, insert gap clip. There it is. Whoa. Insert gap clip, and that'll give you a one second piece of room tone. And again, this cool. only happens if you have your app settings set up to add a room tone on gap clips. You can also change this if you go to file and dun, 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 project settings. There it is. Add room tone to new gap clips. You can turn that on and off. Awesome. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, for sure. My pleasure. All right. What next, Christiana? What do you think is a good next step in our narrative podcast production? Yeah. Let's see. Um, we covered. Did we cover pulling selects yet? Oh, no. Not let's yet. do that. Cool. That's when this gets really awesome. Okay. So. I know we're in a project right now, it says interviews A through F, but let's pretend for a moment that we're not doing that workflow. We're going to do the one that our interviews just exist in this one episode. So I'm going to call this whatever episode two or something, and I'm going to add one more composition, bring in one more interview, and we'll get going. So then we'll have three different interviews that we're going to pull selects from and write narration around. And adding speaker labels, sequence. Oh, this will import and transcribe for us. So we have these three. Let me get this one renamed. Jeremy and Patricia. Interview. We have these three interviews and they're kind of very you know lightly edited filler words that kind of stuff maybe we've made some small content decisions but then we want to start assembling all of these interviews into some logical script that will write narration in between and around that is kind of the definition of narrative podcasting pieces of tape or audio that you write narration in between and around so when we have these I'll remove filler words in this one too, so we're all starting the same place. And we have these here. We're then going to make another composition that's going to be our episode two assembly. Call this whatever you like, but this is where we're going to drop in selects or pieces from our three our, our interviews here and write around. So what that looks like in Descript is one of three ways. Being a text-based editor, cut, copy, paste, will always work. It's pretty great. So you can select a section of audio or of text in our script here, and you can right click or command or control C to copy, just like a doc. And you can just paste that in where you want it to go. It's gonna bring along the audio. It's not a duplicate of the transcription or anything. Uh, you're not gonna lose hours, it's just taking that piece of audio and copying it over into a new composition. You can also do this from project to project. So that's a really great way. Go through, copy and paste. If you're working in that first version where you have these project libraries, 
you're going to need to copy and paste from project to project. Pro tip for that is you can right click a composition and open it in a new window or go to file new window. So you can have multiple Descript windows open at the same time, which is sweet. All right, so we're going to start to pull on episode two uh, assembly stuff here. So we're going to go from each interview. Here's a section that we like. But in this case, we're going to use some of this Descript magic. The first one that is pretty awesome is using our highlighting feature. So you can use highlights. You can also highlight in different colors to color code stuff. Really nice visual way to show the script. And the power tool here in, in Descript is I can copy highlights from a specific composition. So I can go in up to our magic menu again and copy highlights and choose a specific color or all highlights. I'll do all highlights for this one. And then I can just go to my destination composition and paste them in. And it's going to pull that selection. Pretty so sweet. handy. Yeah, that's great. And the last one, lucky number three, is using kind of an in-between. It's a little bit more manual, but it's less color-coded. And that is called Duplicate 2, formerly known as Clip to Composition, where you can take a section, click this Duplicate 2 button, and choose the destination. In this case, I want to choose Episode 2 Assembly. And it's going to drop that selection over to my destination. What's very cool about this is I can go into this Duplicate 2 menu again and use this keyboard shortcut. I'm on a Mac, so it's Option Shift Command C. And that will just use my last selected composition and drop that right over. That can be really, really quick where you just take a selection, Duplicate 2, Option Shift Command C, and it just drops over those selections really quickly. It's awesome. It's speedy. Yeah. Cool. So now we have a bunch of selects from uh, our interviews. If you want to ever remove your highlighting, it's up to you. I usually keep it so I know where it's coming from, but you can Command or Control A to select all and use Shift Command or Shift Control H to highlight on and off, and that will remove all of the highlights. Awesome. Cool. Cool. That's pulling selects in Descript. Love it. Um, okay. Next, let's see here. Um, we wanted to talk about using overdub at some point. Um, we also should touch on how not how we non-destructively can export to stuff like Pro Tools or Adobe. Um, and then probably, and we want to talk about social videos too. We might, maybe we hit social videos since it's connected to like pulling selects a bit. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Cool. That sounds great. I often will use the duplicate two feature for, for social stuff. Cool. I'll duplicate it to a new composition and then I can go in and pull that real quick. And now we have a Jeremy social clip and I can convert this to video because it's going to be a social clip. So I'll just go to file, switch to video composition. And now I can just add in a ton of visual elements that I want. I can change the orientation to portrait square, or landscape, or custom. In this little drop down, I can add a template that I've either made or we have stock audiogram templates that you can customize and save. There's a million options for social video, but if I'm using audio only, this is kind of my, my go-to. Cool. If I'm using video, that's when it really opens up where I'll duplicate this to a new composition, rename it. To a video composition, but instead of just giving me a black frame that I need to build on, I have video that I can go and edit. 
And we're not going to get too deep into this right now, but this is this is the process where I have this clip of Ryan speaking that I'm going to put on, say, on Instagram as a reel. I'll delete the video clips that I don't need from the other participants, make it portrait, resize this how I need, or even double click to crop to portrait. And I can make these look really, really good with just a couple clicks, captions, all that stuff. But check out our, our social video session to learn more about all of that. Um, it's so quick and easy. And then I always have my actual edit of my episode still going for audio only there. Right. Yep. Cool. Yeah. Super quick way to just get out some quick promo videos. That's um, right. Sweet. Yep. Find that, find that session on our YouTube. Sweet. Let's talk real quick about writing in between selects because I think that will bring up overdub in a pretty great cool. way too. Cool. Um, first, we're just going to talk about writing. Straight up writing in Descript. Text, no audio. Uh, it's a really, really common way to make your narrative show. It's, it works just like a doc, uh, but we, we give you a writing mode. So you have a dedicated writing, writing mode separate from editing. It's very explicit. And Essentially, what I'll do is after I've pulled selects and I'm, I've edited them is I'll go through and start to write some scratch text of ideas or notes for a narration or just write narration straight out. What I'll first do is click this plus button and add a speaker label or use the at sign, which is our shortcut. So at speaker label and I'll just write host or whatever your speaker label is. I have a nice little section I can either drop pre-recorded audio into I can record straight in, which we'll get to, but we're going to do writing. So I'm going to click write mode right here or choose W on my keyboard. So it's just for writing script. You know you're in write mode when you have this blue outline. Playback is now command S instead of space bar. And this button is blue. And I can get out of write mode by pressing escape or clicking that button and toggle that on and off. Cool. So here I can just start writing. Maybe I'm going to actually write something useful this time. Let's go down and I'll say, this is really great because Christiana and I, could, and I could be in this project at the same time, writing and collaborating together dropping in comments and giving each other feedback. It's just like, it's amazing. So writing in, in Descript has uh, really changed, really changed my life here. Totally. I mean, in the past, Kevin, podcast studios would have their editor and then also like a Google Doc open, right? Yeah. That was the workflow, which is just tough. Um, but it makes sense. Google Docs are great for collaboration, but now... You can do it all in Descript. Mm -hmm. That's right. Cool. Having, having your audio attached to the text is pretty pretty massive. Because so I'll go through and I'll do some writing. This is just placeholder text. We can't hear it yet. And I'll write some stuff in, then I'll play back some audio. I think the biggest thing, that I, I, there's a few principles that I... And I'll just edit as I go. I'm using Command or Control Delete on my keyboard to strike out strike through and ignore keyboard shortcuts are huge. There's a few principles that I firmly believe in. One, I think that athletes are elevated to this like godlike status or celebrities are elevated to this godlike status. And that's somewhat uncomfortable for me because we're all one and the same in terms of humanity being humans. We have the same problems with the same struggles, the same temptations. And when I find, find a natural break, I'll create a new paragraph new space right here and I'll use the at sign and drop in my host speaker label and start to write some more. Drop in a note for Christiana. I'm a tag Christiana who I haven't added to this drive. So I'm gonna do that real quick. How dare you, first of also all. Also invite you to my drive. More collaboration <laughs> trick up here. Click this plus person button and I can invite them. 
and then also invite them to the drive. Cool, so now I can tag Christiana and drop that in. Need ideas. <laughs> I'm just running some ideas in and maybe my collaborator, Christiana in this case, can fill some stuff out. And I'll just go through and write a bunch of script and continue to do that. I really, I like to bold my script also because it helps me see it. But I'll go through, write a bunch of script, a bunch of uh, host narration, whatnot throughout until we get to a pretty good place. And from there, I'm going to decide to go in the overdub direction or in the recording direction. But before we do that, I want to make sure I take a pause here and maybe there's some looming questions about writing or speaker labels or this this process generally. Totally. Yeah. So just to underscore, um, let's see, Brett asked, so this is what you layer in to have someone record it layer once approved. Exactly. Bingo. Exactly. Yes. Awesome. Super cool. Um, Deirdre asked, let me grab this so I can pull it up on screen because it's a good question. What about doing the reverse, writing a scratch narration and then hunting for the clip you want to use? Love that. Love that. Cool. Especially if you really know your interviews, I will say the vast majority of, of pro narrative podcast teams out there, they have a pitch, they have an idea for an episode or for a series. So they know what the story is because they've done a lot of research, but unless they have the tape, the recording and the interview, it's hard to get the writing of the script. Perfect. You might have an outline that you're kind of filling in and going from there, but it's pretty common to get the tape and then write around the tape rather than write right. a big long script and then try to fit your tape in that might not fit perfectly. Totally. That's yes. a great workflow yes. tip. Um, cool. A couple more questions related to this. Can you import a script template into Descript? Not yet, <laughs> but that's a cool feature request. Very cool feature request. You could make one easily. Um, if we have time, if we are not going to, but please go to <laughs> feedback.descript.com to put that in. Um, in the you, could, right now. you could definitely, that'd be a really cool feature. You could just like copy and paste, like that would you can copy and paste in write mode and descript. Oh, so, yeah. oh, yeah, say you have it somewhere in your um, in a Google Doc or Notion Doc, or whatever it is you use, you can, you can just copy and paste there. But I, I love the idea of a smooth this is the blank canvas yeah. that I like to use. That's a really great idea. Just put there the feature request link in the chat. Definitely. There's these things called inline notes and uh, markers, which help you create sections and notes within a script. So a combination of markers, inline notes, and then just written text, you can get a pretty great looking layout that you could replace any text with a interview or a narration for sure. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Um, should we keep chugging? There are more questions, but I want to make sure we hit everything. Yeah. The next okay. big thing is this decision to go record or use overdub. Let's definitely, let's hit that. And folks, if we don't get to your questions, first of all, throw them in the ask a question section and Marcella will grab those. But we also do office hours every Wednesday in the discord. Mm -hmm. So join us, join Marcello there. Um, 1 p.m. PT, 4 p.m. ET, um, if we don't get to your stuff. But okay, yeah, keep going. Love it. End your day with Marcelo on the East Coast. Yep. So we have this text here, the script that we want to record or turn to overdub. There's a couple different options. Overdub is great. It gives you the opportunity to hear. Uh, overdub is our AI, synthetic AI uh, generated voice feature. So you can create a voice for yourself or use one of our stock voices. And this is pretty great. You just assign the speaker label to the voice that you've created. Check out help.descript.com if you want to learn how to make a voice for yourself. But it's really helpful to be able to just like sit back and listen. And it's it's awesome for that, for scripting especially. 
if you're making a narrative show, you're eventually going to record your own voice as a host. You're not going to use your AI voice, I wouldn't think. So set up overdub. You could listen back. If you do table reads, those kinds of things, awesome. But when you're ready to actually record your narration, we just released this feature called Replace. And you can replace a section of text with overdub or an actual recording. And it'll keep your transcription. It'll keep everything set, uh, your, your actually text that you wrote in, but it'll replace it with real audio. So what you do is you highlight it, click replace with recording. It pulls up our recorder here. And I set my mic up. It's my Shure MV7. And I turn studio sound on because I love studio sound. And I turn transcription on because I obviously want it to be transcribed. I just click replace selection. And in my settings, I have a little countdown. <clears throat> and I'll just speak. Jeremy began talking a bit about his principles as a public figure. Press stop. It's going to process real quick. And I'm going to have this replaced with real audio. This is the silly thing I said at the beginning. I'm just going to delete that. But now I have, Jeremy began talking a bit about his principles as a public figure. Cool. And I can just get my timing set and Jeremy will jump right in. I'm just using that drag word tab feature there. Principles as a public figure. I think that athletes are elevated to this like godlike status. Or just like that. And I'll go through and replace all of my scripting one at a time, simple as can be. As I'm going, I also might be making changes to studio sound. So I can click anywhere in that script and adjust my studio sound. And I'll do that as I go. So if like 80% intensity for studio sound is my magic number, then I'll go through and do that. And each recording, I'll just make a quick adjustment right there. And that's it. It's pretty rad, pretty easy to do. You can go through and really just assemble your entire episode and publish it or add music, which I'll show real quick, mm -hmm. or export it out to you know Audition, Pro Tools, Premiere, Reaper, any, any other program if you want to continue your production in any of those tools. Awesome. Yeah, folks are loving this feature in the chat. Yeah, I, I'm really excited about it. For me, I work in like the engineering production side a lot in shows. So I'll just send this when it's ready, when we've we've done all of our writing together. Uh, I'll, we'll send this to the host and they'll open it up in their home studio or at the studio itself. And they can just go through and record their stuff. And they can get like three, four or five takes of lines if they need to. Yeah. In a recording. And then we can edit it out and pull from the the takes that are that are perfect. It's awesome. Yeah. That's super, super sweet. Cool. All right. I mentioned music. I'm going to show that quickly because we're we're close on time. Totally. But just know there's this little layer track above the script track in our timeline. And that's what I use as my destination for music. So pretty common thing is create a little bit of space in between some narration and your interview. And you either pull in some music from your computer or from our stock audio library here, which there's tons and tons of stuff there. For me, I know what the tracks are that I need. So I'm going to pull them from my computer because I have them saved for repurposing. And I'll just drag and drop that music in right where I want it to start. I can add little fade ins if I need to. I can move the music around. I can also hold Option or Alt and create some volume keyframes, they're called, so the music comes up automatically on its own. It's called automation, and then down when I want it to. And if that's too much for you, I'm holding Option or Alt and adding those, and up is music up, down is music down. You can also add ducking as an audio effect which will automatically bring down the volume of your music. So it depends if you want to have a little bit more control or not. But just like that, 
in 30 seconds. Jeremy began talking a bit about his principles as a public figure. I think that athletes are elevated to this like... It gives you some nice background scoring that you need for your show. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, actually there was a pretty good question um, related to what you just showed. I'm just going to pull up mm -hmm. really quick. Yeah. If you're working with a music score, sound design, etc., is the workflow generally descript editing, import to a DAW or editor to add music slash sound design, or can you do it all within Descript? So you kind of just showed you can do it all with Descript. Yeah, the, the big thing that uh, we can't do just yet is easy working with stems. So if you have a piece of music, you have a single track or single file per instrument. And that's something that we might typically do in Pro Tools or Audition. But if you have a single music file like this, which has all the instruments in one file, this is the move for sure. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, someone asked just one track for music, right? No layering. Right. Yes. Okay, cool. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, and a good question. Someone asked, what is a DAW? Ooh. Yeah. It's a Digital audio workstation, I think the W is workspace, workstation, um, which is basically just another fancy group name for Audition or Pro Tools or Reaper, um, right. Logic. It's just a, a place where you edit, create, record audio. Yes. The more intense editors that kept me out of the podcasting game for a while. <laughs> Just look at you now. Personal. Look at you now. I, oh, yeah. Look at me now. I can uh, type in Descript. <laughs> yeah, you're like a, an Emmy award, or not Emmy, but an award-winning podcaster now. Oh, yeah. Oh, Add yeah. that. I also am a rocket scientist. True. Okay, Among test. my other things. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mission awesome. star chef. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. My turkey bacon this morning should have <laughs> that I fried up in five minutes. <laughs> I'm being so vulnerable today. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. We just covered a lot of ground. Is there anything else? We have two minutes left, Kevin, that you want to say or highlight before we wrap up here. I don't think I'm, okay. I'm going to, I'll point out two things, just like getting okay. stuff out of Descript that I think is really helpful. Um, the first is creating a publish page, mm -hmm. which is just an accessible web link, share.descript.com that links directly to this edit and you can publish it, copy the link to the page and share it with a collaborator. So it's especially huge if you are working with someone that just isn't in Descript or you don't want them in your Descript project. Um, and then when you're ready to actually export, you can export your audio file if it's good to go. Or you do a timeline export if you're going to work in Audition or Pro Tools or, or Logic or any of those. Right. And then you'll do a whole like session data import process and it's a whole thing. One day we'll do we'll do a, a session on on that and show some of the quirks. But that's how a lot of us use Descript. We use Descript for like 80, 90% of the workflow up front and then do the last right. mixing sound design portion in, in something like Pro Tools. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. Um, okay, awesome. Again, if you were really interested in a certain part of this, like we talked a little bit about social video and overdub, video podcasting, all of those sessions can be found on our YouTube channel under our live events playlist. So go check it out if you want more. Um, I have some feedback polls up in Crowdcast. We would love your feedback on how you enjoyed this event and also just how you're liking Descript. It's really helpful for us. Also, feel free to type in the chat ideas for future events of things you'd like us to cover. We want these to be as helpful for y'all as possible. So, so definitely just let us know. Um, again, if you are new here um, or you're on the free plan currently, get a month of free Descript Pro on us, scan that QR code or use code podcast30 when you check out. Um, 
Thank you to Marcelo for doing awesome in the chat um, and answering all those questions. As we said, Marcelo does weekly office hours in our Discord. And there's also 15,000 folks who are getting inspiration and helping each other. So scan that other QR code um, to join us to join us in there. It's a it's a grand old time. Um, this was great. Kevin, thank you so much for an amazing, amazing demo. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Of course. And thank you all in the audience for being here. Um, again, this is recorded. Yes, it'll be on YouTube literally right now. And we'll send it in a follow-up email. So if you wanted to go watch right after this or all day, if you just wanted to hang out with me and Kevin all day, you could do that. That's right. And we're a good time. So um, cool. Okay. This was a blast. Hopefully we see you at a future live event. And yeah, happy podcasting, everyone. Thanks for joining, everybody. See you next time. See ya.